Welcome Valpo fans to another edition of Valpo Basketball Weekly. I'm Aaron Lovett, joined today by the head coach of the Valpo Women's Basketball Program, Mary Evans, as the team gets ready to start out the regular season. Coach Evans, thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having me, Aaron. Uh, let's go back to this past summer. Um, obviously, you guys put a lot of work in. Um, you know, it's interesting transition. You lost a lot of production from last year's team. So um, what were kind of your points of emphasis this summer with the team trying to figure out um, who's going to play what role this coming season? Yeah, you know, I think the biggest things that we wanted to get out of the summer um, off the court, we wanted to kind of spend a majority of the summer rebuilding our our, our off court um culture. You know, I think you know, the last couple of years have taken its toll um, with COVID and, and some of the separation measures we had to do to play. And so we, again, focused a lot on just spending very intentional time together. Um, and we were fortunate to have a great uh, group of older players who were able to do a lot of that without us having to really structure it from a coaching standpoint. So, you know, when we weren't on the court, they spent a ton of time going out to dinner, cooking for each other, going up to the beach, um, going into Chicago and just doing things um, with each other and getting to know each other at, a, I think, a much deeper level. And so I think that was a big part of our summer. And we've seen a lot of growth in that aspect of our team. And then on the court, we really tried to go back to having a, a year one mentality because we did graduate so much experience um, as a coaching staff. We wanted to assume that no one knew anything and break it down from the beginning and really just reteach our offensive and defensive systems. Um, and so it was it was pretty basic all summer long, and we, we tried to build on that uh, throughout the course of the summer and into this preseason. And um, the kids have done a really good job of embracing that and, and enjoying kind of going back to the basics and, and learning it from the ground up. And um, I think I'm I think they're going to see a real benefit in that as we move forward in a better understanding of what we do and why we do it um, and why it's effective and, and how to do it in the best way possible. Well, we'll uh, go down the roster here. The first kind of group of players I want to talk about um, are the returnees who fans have seen play significant roles um, over the past couple of years. You look at Olivia Brown was on the all newcomer team last year for the Valley You've got Leah Ernest, Maya Dunson, Elise Pitts, all players who've played roles for you uh, the last couple of years. Um, how have they progressed? What have they been able to improve on that's going to help them lead this team into this season? Yeah, you know, I think I'll start with Elise, and she's been here the longest, starting her fifth season here and, and being here um, with me pretty much from day one. Um, you know, she's going to have to take on a much bigger role at the point guard position for us. And so a lot of her focus this summer was it was working um, to better understand how to run the team, play more like a point guard. Um, she's done a, an amazing job, especially here in the last few months. She spent real intentional time with um, our new assistant, Coach Dosik, who was, you know, a one two guard in college and played in our system, really picking her brain and learning how to push the ball and, and, and how we want to how we want to run our fast break, when we want to pull it out, how we want to initiate offense, um, the reads that she's looking for. So she's really grown tremendously, I think, in that regard. I think through our first two scrimmages, we've seen real growth in her on when to go fast. She's an extremely athletic kid, um, extremely fast, and learning to play with a, a different tempo, um, go fast when she needs to, but be able to slow it down when she doesn't, and really kind of play within herself a little bit more. Um, her other big thing I think that she's shown great improvement in over the course of the summer is her consistency with her outside shot. She's always had beautiful form, um, but maybe hasn't shot it at the clip that we thought she could. And I think she's shooting the ball really, really well right now. Um, you haven't been able to leave her open in practice. And so that's been really exciting to see her kind of grow in those two areas, as well as grow as a leader off the floor. Um, her and Maya and Liv Brown have been asked to really kind of be leaders on the floor and they've done a great job with that. And um, so I've, I've enjoyed watching that with her. Um, you know, I think Maya Dunson has really improved also with her shooting. Um, you know, she's a great defender and a great rebounder for us. Um, and she, I think has really spent a lot of time this summer, just getting more confident in her ability to make that outside shot, to do it within the course of our offense. And then also to work on her tempo on her drives you know she's going to have the ability to get a lot of mismatch is for us this year on five players and she's got to be able to attack those kids and finish at the rim so she spent quite a bit of the summer working on her shot and then working on 
finishing consistently at the rim. And we've seen great improvements in both of those areas for, for her as well. Um, Liv Brown's had another solid summer, just getting um, better in all assets. Like she's spent a lot of, a lot of time working with our, our coaches through the summer on change of direction, um, finishing at the rim, continuing to obviously shoot the basketball at a high level, like she has always done, but just kind of working on different finishes around the rim, attacking uh, defenses, getting a little bit more solid in her offensive moves. Um, so it's been exciting to watch her growth there. Um, and the same with Leah. I mean, Leah and Liv are tireless workers are in the gym all the time working on their shots um, and their finishes and always asking for extra help. And so I think those that core group of four have just been fantastic leaders off the floor, on the floor, um, showing kids how to do extra work, showing kids how much time you need to be in the gym. Um, and also vocally leading. And so I, I think I've seen a significant growth in all four of them, and I'm excited to kind of watch them take a different role on this team, have to take a different step and really step up and and be um, be the players on the floor. And so that's kind of fun to, to watch them grow in that over the summer. You've got another set of returnees in Ava Interante, Jada Johnson, Katie Byer, who've been on the team a couple of years, haven't seen much action, kind of biding their time. Mm-hmm. And those players who have moved on, they're going to get chances this year. Uh, what are we going to see out of them that we haven't gotten the chance to see yet? Um, I think you're going to see them, which they just haven't had a chance. I think they've not uh, collectively, they haven't gotten a ton of minutes. I think when they have gotten their minutes, they've been pretty productive. Um, I think Ava has uh, really grown a ton over this off season. I mean, Ava and Katie Byer and Jada are they work so hard. Like I never question what, what kind of um, effort I'm getting on the court. They're going to give you a hundred percent all the time. Um, They're going to, anything I ask them to do, it's going to be at a sprint. I think Katie has really um, gotten comfortable uh, being stretched out at the college three point line. She was a great high school three point shooter um, and can really shoot that mid range at a high clip. I think she's, she's showing that now from our, our uh, college line, you know, Ava is a, a, Tough kid can drive it, can shoot it, finishes well at the rim, um, starting to really understand where passes are and becoming a better passer for us and is also a really good defender. So I think through the first three scrimmages, we've, we've all been very excited at what Ava's shown on the floor and what she's given us. Um, and then Jada, I think, is like one of those glue kids. Like they're those kids you can't live without on the floor. Um she is a great screener. Like as we get into into our offensive stuff, she is always hitting people on screens. And and I know that seems like an underrated thing, but it makes our offense go. And she sets great screens. She rebounds. She's shooting at a, at a much better clip right now than she has in the past. Um, she's driving off of her shot fake. Um, she's a physical presence for us. And so I think all three of those kids, not it's not their fault. They haven't gotten the minutes. They've just been stuck behind kids. Um, that have played in the system longer and and were granted that extra COVID year. And I think they've all waited their turn to get on the floor. And I think they're all really excited about the opportunity and, and they've made the most out of it through the summer. And I'm excited to watch them grow, continue to get better as they get actual game experience, which sometimes you just need game experience to understand things. So um, really, really, really excited about what they've done this summer and, and look forward to watching them uh, this year and watching them grow. Obviously, we know the transfer portal these days, a big part of the game, bringing in transfers. Um, You have a couple in Olivia Brown and Maya Dunson, who you brought in and have become key contributors. Mm -hmm. Two new transfers on this year's team, Olivia Sims and Emma Tekka. Um, What is it you look for, I guess, when you go and look to try to bring in a transfer? And then what can we expect out of Olivia and Emma this year? Yeah, I think we don't look for anything different than um, what we look for when we're looking for freshmen, I think. We've, we know both of those young young women. Um, we've had recruiting ties to both of them um, within our staff. And so we kind of knew who they were as people and, and students. And I think that's the first thing we look for. We don't want to go into that portal and take somebody that is going to hurt our team culture. And I think both of them are, are first and foremost, um, just really good people and great young women. Um, and then they're both, I think, gifted basketball players in different ways. Emma Taka is a sharp shooter. Like she does not miss. Um, she's a great three-point shooter. I think she's a kid that has a chip on her shoulder and wants to prove to people that she can guard better than maybe she's been told she can guard in the past. Um, so I've seen her really focus in that 
in on that this summer and trying to become a better defender. Um, and we're continuing to work with her on playing off of her shot and using that shot fake and getting to the rim within our system and, and finding that space. Olivia Sims, I think she can score at all three levels. She's a gifted guard. She's a big, strong guard. Um, you know, she's definitely a Missouri Valley type of guard where you have that bigger physical guard that can defend and she can score at the rim. She's a very creative finisher, finishes well with both hands. Um, she can shoot the three. She's actually got a really good mid range game. Um, so I'm really excited about both of them. And, and I think they've got uh, great opportunities to, to fit into this group. I mean, we've only got 12 players, so, you know, everyone's going to have a great opportunity to get minutes this year. And, um, I'm excited to watch and see what, how they can find their niche on the team and, and, and see what they can do this year. And rounding out the roster, you've got three freshmen, but none of them traditional freshmen. Um, you redshirted two last year, and then the third, Ali Saunders, came in uh, for the spring semester last year, something you've done with a few other freshmen, um, incoming freshmen, over the course of the last few years. Um, what is it about the ability to help them develop to be here on campus, to be here with the team, um, that makes that a, a strategy for you guys to bring these freshmen in a semester early? Yeah, I mean, I think you get them here, you get them in a college environment, they get classes underneath their belt, right? They're going to take a whole semester of school where they're not playing basketball. Um, like Allie last year obviously didn't play when she got here in game. So it gives them an opportunity to get settled into school, um, it gives them opportunity to get in the weight room and start to kind of develop that college body that they need to have to play in, in a league this physical. And it gives them a whole entire semester of practicing, learning our offense, um, learning our defensive concepts, playing against bigger, more physical kids. Um, you know, it worked out for Allie where she was able to come. Um, you know, we did it the year prior due to some COVID issues and, and, and Katie uh, not being able to play in, co in high school that year. Um, so I think it gives them an advantage and I'm excited about all three of our, our true freshmen, um, who were all here last year. So, you know, Allie is a point guard that we targeted really early in the recruiting process. She's a bigger guard at five, nine. She's strong. Uh, she's very crafty. She's a little bit, she's very different than Pitts, you know, as far as Pitts is very fast and, and, and pretty straight line. Allie dances a little bit more. She's a tremendous passer, shooter, um, rebounder for her size. So I think she's got a tremendous upside. And I think like any other freshman, it's just about getting into the college game. You know, you're an 18 year old playing against 22, sometimes 23, 24 year olds now with COVID. Um, so it's just about growing and maturing within our system, within her body and within college basketball. So, you know, I don't know what the timeline for any of our freshmen are going to be, um, but I know that all three of them are extremely gifted. Ella Van Wilden is probably one of the best shooters I've ever seen. She's got a beautiful shot. It's simple. Um, she's got great length and can guard at the rim. Um, she rebounds very well outside of our area. So I think she, again, is, is just continuing to grow and develop as a player. And um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing all three of these young women get out on the floor and, and, and see what they can uh, figure out this year. Um, the last one is Lovey Malone, big physical um, guard again, similar to Olivia Sims and her ability to guard, um, rebound, slash to the rim, um, a pretty good three-point shooter, um, but just a big, strong physical guard that I think is going to change a little bit of how our team looks like defensively. And I think that's something that we understand we needed to address. And I think we've done that with some of our recruiting, um, just getting some kids that have some great defensive instincts and and understand some things and can make some plays and, and get us back to the defense we want to play where we're turning people over and we're making plays and getting steals. The regular season opens up Monday at Central Michigan. Um, what are you looking for from the team in this non-conference schedule as you get ready um, for Missouri Valley Conference play? Yeah, I think growth. I think that's kind of been the story of the summer is just trying to feel like we've gotten better after every single practice. And, and I think for the most part, every practice we have left the court feeling like we've grown in some ways. And I think that's what I'm looking for throughout the non-conference. You know, we're going to practice, we're going to prepare, we're going to play games, which are like tests. We're going to take those tests, hopefully pass them, <laughs> and then learn from our mistakes and, our, and the things we got incorrect. 
Um, but when we don't, you know, win those games, continue to try to learn and grow um, because this team is very inexperienced and they have to take the time to get the experience. And the only way to get experience is to play games. And so um, just trying to continue to, to prepare, to train, to practice um, the habits we need to, to, to have to win games. Like we have to learn to play at hundred percent for 40 minutes um, to train that way so that we're falling back on those habits um, and to continue and grow. And we're going to make mistakes, but how do we handle those mistakes? mistakes? How do we look at those mistakes? Do we look at them as failures or do we look at them as opportunities to grow? And hopefully we'll spend most of this year looking at them as opportunities to grow um, because those are the teams that continue to get better from November to March. And that's what we want to do is get better um, every single day from, from November 7th to we March, what is it, 8th or 9th we leave for Moline, I think, something like that. Um, and hopefully play our best basketball where we're out in the quad cities, which is our goal um, pretty much every year. So I said the regular season opens Monday night at Central Michigan, home opener against Southern Miss Saturday, November 12th at the Arc, tip off that day at noon. Coach Evans, thanks for joining me today. Best of luck here as the season gets underway. Thanks, Aaron. This has been Valpo Basketball Weekly brought to you by Lakeshore Bone and Joint Institute.